Okay, hello, it's Ryan Gordon, and here comes part six. Um, okay, yeah, that was fun, I like that. So where did we leave off on this thing? Let's see. Uh, I think we should do some technical debt stuff first here, so let's do this first, because while we don't use much of standard I.O., we should include the header, because there are a couple of printfs in here, so F printfs. So we'll just stick that in there. Um, and I want to get rid of these fix me's that have been piling up real quick. And then we'll get down to doing something simple and get out of the stream for the day. So, um, okay. So we have in here, we're just trying to go fast. So we're just like, if this fails, what are we going to do? Let's just panic. That's not so good. Let's put a complaint up here and free all our stuff and get out. Uh, to do. So audio stream put failed. That will not make any sense to the end user, but. It is what it is. There you go. Get rid of that. Clean up that stuff. And SDL. Free audio stream. You know, honestly, with these sort of things, I'm going to do this. This is awful. Everyone's going to be mad at me. But let's do it, because these are how things go wrong. I'm going to do a go-to. Dun, dun, dun. I know, I know. They tell you never to do this, but when you're writing C and not C++, sometimes it is useful to have a go-to for error handling uh, and almost nothing else. But So, go-to failed. Because you start having these cases in here where this failed, clean up everything that happened before it. Then this failed. Clean up everything that happened before, plus this thing up here. This, as you add more steps, you just get more and more cleanup, and sooner or later you're eventually going to forget to clean something up or copy and paste wrong. So in that case, it's actually better to just have a go-to that sits at the end and cleans all this junk up. So go-to failed. So in normal processing, this will you know, go there. But if we fail, clean up everything. How awful. Okay, let's see. Well, you know, actually, let's just even... We don't actually have to check that if there, but we'll leave it. Why not? And just set everything to null. Unconditionally here. Stream wave bump len. Okay, sure. And then return false because there's a failure. Okay. Now this code up here is now getting much simpler. This could technically return false, but let's go ahead and do this too. Go to fail just to be consistent. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see what is audio stream flush. We don't know. I'm going to assume zero, though, so. On success. Come here. There we go. Okay, audio stream flush failed. Go to failed. Okay, so that's there. Meet those vegetables, that's good. And there's some other fix me's down here because we're going as fast as we could the other day. Graceful handling. All right, let's do the same thing we did up here without the go-to in this case. We'll just, in case of failure down here, well, here, let's be even fancier than this. All right. Since we're starting to repeat ourselves, and a little bit of cutting and pasting is good, but let's just stop audio. Let's just put this stuff up here, since this is all global. Although, I would like these to stop being globals, but for now they're okay. Basically, this just says, when we, when we say stop audio, we say clean up everything that's in there. Future stuff will not have any audio to play, so that'll go away. 
Okay, so if this fails, and stop audio is robust enough that audio, there you go, that it, if something's half initialized, it can deal with it. So we'll go like that, rather than repeat ourselves in here. Stop audio. I'll make this a simple message box. Where'd you go? There you are. So now if this fails, instead of freaking out and quitting the program, it'll just show an error and stop the audio, and then the user can decide what they want to do with that. If they want to try and play something else or fix something on their system. Same with this thing. Although I'm thinking we should probably wrap this whole thing in a function too, but for now it'll do. Oops. go then else if oh no come on stop um i always end up with my fingers on the wrong row and i'm hitting page up instead of like left when i least expect it and it blows my mind every time um okay so if they put that if that fails do we stop the audio yeah this is safe to make it do an else if okay cool okay so there's that were there any other fix me's in here yes there was error checking haha <laughs> there we go again Okay, this has graceful handling now, so <laughs> quote unquote, get rid of that fix me. This has this handle, cool. Error checking, let's do that. Audio stream get. Number of bytes or negative one on error. Oh, that's interesting. Hang on a second. Bites to fill. Okay, so this might have actually given us less than we expected, but that would be converted bytes. Okay. Now this, in theory, should give us the amount we expected. Just in case, we'll do this. Oh, come on, stop doing that, Ryan. Converted bytes equals negative one, like it totally failed. Then we'll just do greater than zero. So don't actually copy anything. Don't actually try to feed this to the device if we didn't get anything. By remaining equals zero. Okay. Um, so now in here, num sample should be num converted bytes. And if that fails, like totally straight up fails, like it ran out of memory or something, we're just going to play silence. But again, what are you going to do when you run out of memory? There's really nothing to do. All right. So then that'll do the same thing. Okay. So that handles that error. We out of fix me's? We are out of fix me's, hooray. Yes, okay, good. All right, so we're gonna do one thing here and then I think we'll call it a day because we've eaten our vegetables and we just need to add one more thing here. So I'm gonna add one more slider here. And this is gonna be a lot of cut and paste because we're gonna throw all this code out again pretty soon. But if you recall, we added a volume rectangle. Let's add a slide. Uh, uh, balance rectangle, we'll call this. So we want it to be same width as the volume one, so we'll leave that, but we want it to be at a different location, so for, let's put it at 300, does that seem okay? So I, yeah, I think we have room for that. And we'll do this the same way. <clears throat> All right, let's see, so that's that. We have that. I'm just gonna search for volume rec because just look for volume because we're gonna a lot of this is gonna be copy and paste. I'm not gonna lie to you. For example, volume slider value is gonna be balance slider value. 
Now, as I'm cutting and pasting this stuff, you're going to start to think, wouldn't it be smart to refactor this into, like, a framework or just some functions and a couple of data structures? And the answer is yes, although there is a danger in that because that's how you end up writing your own implementation of GTK Plus or QT or whatnot. But um, and the answer would be yes, but we're going to absolutely 100% throw all of this away. So right now we're just trying to get something working. All right, let's see. Do the same thing here. Balance knob. Okay. But generally, I would say absolutely positively don't do what I'm doing right now when you're writing code that you intend to keep. As you can see, I'm just replacing every instance of the word volume in here with balance in a second copy of the same code. And we're going to deal with that in one second. Okay, so now. If we're in the balance rect and we do this, we just set up our knob correct, correctly, we update our variable. Okay, that's fine. So these should work independently of each other. We need to draw it too. Let me get that real quick here. There we go. Fill this rectangle, which we've set up up there, balance rect, and we need the balance knob. Okay, so this is not hooked up to anything yet, but let's... Uh, Okay, good, nothing broke, that's a nice start. Let's try and run this real quick. Here comes everyone's favorite song. Just kidding. Oh, we're on mute again, that keeps happening to me. Ah! Oh, that hurt, okay. Okay, so, let's play that again. So, Volume knob still works. And this also works separately, but it doesn't affect the volume. So, okay, we're doing what we need to do here. That's good. Good, good, good. Um, let's get this back here. Uh, hello, where'd you go? Okay, that window. Oh, I... background. There you go. Steel amp. There we go. Um, the curse of Unix processes right there. Okay, so we have the UI set up. That was just a cut and paste. Easy peasy. But now we're going to change one thing in here. So we set up balance slider value right here. Same as we had a volume slider value. So we're just going to hook this up so it works. We're going to come into our little magic loop here, our little magic function here where this decides if it's time to give new audio to the device. And in there, we have a loop where we change... Ah, come back. Okay, keep hitting that button, I'm sorry. We Inside of this big honkin' function here, we have this little loop, which processes every sample and changes the volume of it. Um, so we're going to add something to this. Um, and we're going to say we want the balance of the thing. Uh, so when I say balance, I mean how much of this is playing in the left speaker and how much is playing in the right speaker. So we're going to just take this and first we're going to wrap this thing. If volume slider value, because I was just thinking about this, does not equal 1.0f. Because why do the work to process every value in this array if you're just going to set it to the same thing it already is, if you're multiplying it by 1? So let's not iterate through there to change the volume if we don't have to. Okay. Um, in theory, you could do this all in one in one pass through the array, but let's keep it simple for now. Change the volume of the audio we're playing. Okay. Change the balance of the audio we're playing. And we'll do the same thing here. If balance slider value does not equal 1.0, uh, because again, if the balance is, well, does not equal, I guess we should set that differently, shouldn't we? Um, does not equal 0 0.5. Can you represent that in a float? I don't know. If it doesn't equal exactly halfway through this thing, 
uh, then we're going to change the balance. So let's try to do that. In fact, let's set this default value. Where'd you go, balance slider value? There you are. We'll set you to 0 0.5 to start off. 0 0.5F. There we go. So it's dead center of the thing to start with. And this knob needs to be plus the width divided by 2, give or take, there we go. So that starts in the center. That knob will start in the center of the thing because we're balanced, right? And it'll come through here. Okay, so now we change the balance of the audio we're playing. That's what we want to do. Now, we know that right now, because this is the way we have it set up, this audio stream always, always, always gives us two channels. And I believe because when we open this new audio stream, yeah, we opened it. Yeah, you can see it right here too. Two channels, stereo, left and right speaker. Um, now this may not be perfect. You might have a 5.1 set up, a quad set up, a surround sound 7.1 or whatever set up. Um, SDL will mush that down to do a left and right channel because that's what we've asked it for. And it'll play hopefully appropriately on your hardware, whatever it is. Now we can get more complex than that, but for now that's where we're at. So we're going to try this balance slider here and say that everything coming through here, now the volume stuff works on every sample, left and right, but here we're going to do every other sample is left and right and left and right and left and right. Uh, so we're going to deal with that and say, all right, let's see, um, for int i equals zero, well, i is less than num samples, just like before. I plus equals two, because we're going to do these two samples at a time, left and right. So instead of doing I plus plus here, we're going to do the two samples at a time. So sam uh, first sample is left, second is right. Um, okay, so samples I, which is the first one, well, okay, let's figure out, how, let's sit here and think for a moment about how to do this. So, the more the slider is to the left, the higher percentage of the audio needs to be in the left channel. So, const float, should we do these as floats for now? Yeah, they're floats anyway, okay, that works, so, float left equals, well, before we do that, we're going to need to know the percentage we're at, so that's the balance slider value. At zero, you're all the way on the left, and at one, you're all the way on the right. So, okay, so const float right equals, I'm going to do these backwards because it, it's easier to think about it this way. I plus one, the second sample, um, times, which is already a floating point value, so do that times balance slider value. So that's just, so the more to the left you are, the closer to zero you are until you're all the way at zero. So if this is, if the slider is all the way at zero, it's all the way to the left, you want nothing to play in the right channel. So you want to turn that one off all the way. Yeah, okay. And when it's all the way at the right, then it'll be one. So we want to play it all the way in the right. So that's just that's simple. That's just a simple multiplication that makes it either full or empty. And then for the left, sit, oh, come back. Here we go. Let's just get my hands on the right keys here because I'm totally hitting random things. Okay. For the left, we want to do just samples i because that's the first sample there. And it's the same idea, except you want this to be all the way full when the slider's all the way on the left. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this, and we'll say 1.0 minus the current position of that slider. So when this is zero, because we're subtracting it from one, when this is at zero, it's all the way on the left, it'll be, it'll be set to one, because one minus zero is one. And when it's all the way at the right, 
then this this value would be 1, which will make the final result 0, because 1 minus 1 is 0. So all you're doing is basically inverting that value. Um, so, And then you do the same basic multiplication to get samples like that. And now that we have explained this, let's put this in the order that makes more sense. i, i plus 1. Okay. So what we just have to do then, we don't even need to do this as variables. We can just do multiply equal here. Same with this. Multiply equal that. Cool. All right. I don't know. I guess let's see if it does anything. I don't know that I'm going to be able to, to show this to you because I don't think this is going to pick this up as a stereo thing. Um, so you're just going to have to take my word for it. This works. Let's see. Oops, hang on. Oh, parentheses snuck in there. Sorry about that. Cool. Okay. Um, hmm, okay. Let's get over there. Well, that's definitely my left speaker. That's definitely my right one. I'm just going to pick up this microphone and see if this makes a difference. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I don't know. We'll see. So it's all the way in the right. No, it's all the way in the left. Okay, I think... I don't know if the microphone picked that up. That might have been... That might just sound like nothing at all. But, okay, so now we have balance hooked up, and we have... I'm just going to make sure volume also works with this. Put this all the way in the left, and... Yep, volume also works. Good. So they work separately. That's good stuff. Um, that's not bad. That's not bad. Okay, that this seems like a good place to stop for the day. Um, probably in the next video, we're going to tear a bunch of stuff up and do some very complex, fancy stuff. But this is a good place to stop for today. We hooked up the... We, we cleaned up our mess, a couple of messes, and we um, hooked up a balance slider, which is kind of neat. And... That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm trying to think here. I'm thinking one more thing I want to stick in here, just while we're sitting here. I mean, we hooked up a stop audio function. Let's add a stop rectangle here. At, I don't know. Under 200. Let's put this at 300. Sure, why not? Let's see if it works. Just while we're here and I'm thinking about it. So we had our... our Rewind button or pause button. I'm just putting dead center stop button in there. Which will just stop audio. And to be clear, once you stop audio, you're going to have to drag and drop a new thing, a new file on there to make it play again. But just, you know, we're here. I'm feeling excited about this. Let's just do it real fast. Ah, what's going on? Oh, yeah, you have to draw it, too. Uh, sorry. Stop rect. And this this is... Uh-huh, yeah. This is the benefit of moving things to other functions. It's like, well, let's just hook up a button real quick and call the function we already wrote, which is kind of neat. Oh, we're, we're, we're a little close here. It's looking like a kind of a grumpy cyclops kind of thing. Anyway, well, I'll move that over a little bit, but there's play, there's rewind, pause, and here comes stop. There. See, now we have a failure because it's telling me I can't use the audio stream because we already freed it. So we'll clean that up next time. That's pretty good for now. Let me just move this button over because that's going to drive me nuts all day if I don't do it. 300, 400, let's make this... 275, just so it's just just there. Just oh yeah, I got to compile. Hang on one second here. There. Okay. Well, that bothers me slightly less, but okay. <laughs> um, we'll clean all that up later. All right. I think that's good enough for today. So all right. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.